Hello, my name is Patrick Dunkel, and I'm currently a freshman at Pearl River Community College. How many of you have passed over a bridge today, or in the last week? Or more importantly, how many of you, as you pass over the bridge, as you pass over the bridge, hoping that it won't collapse under you? This notion troubles most Mississippians today. Most bridges and roads in Mississippi were created during the Eisenhower presidency term, which was about 60 years ago, and some of these bridges are still being used today. Most concrete and wooden bridges are closed down due to the splinters and cracks in the, in the wood and concrete, due from flooding, heating, and old age. In the last five years, the numbers of closed bridges are estimated around 7,400. Not only will this limit transportation, but it will also require a huge amount of funds for our repairs. We pass over bridges almost every single day of our lives, but we never considered the notion of potential collapse of the bridge if we drive over it, or on a less intense notion, uh, on a less intense no notion, bridges closing down, which will require more amount of time to reach our destinations. Although this, this now might seem like a big problem for most Mississippians, some Mississippians who live near these bridges depend upon them, and usually their livelihoods are at stake. Now, some of these problems that are associated with the infrastructure have affected numerous of things, one of them the economy. Most of Mississippi's economy is dependent on these bridges, since most of the economy consists of manufacturing, timbering, agriculture, and poultry, which require shipping in these lines of work. For example, a farmer whose products are soybeans, corn, or cotton is shipping his products to the Mississippi River. Now, a whole bunch of bri uh, bridges are closed down on his way, so that will add 10 or 30 more minutes for his drive to reach his destination. Now this will consume more gas, which will use more money, and it will also consume more time for the farmer. Not only is Mississippi's economy negatively affected by the infrastructure, but also the sick and elderly. Emergency services, which the sick and elderly depend upon, will have more difficulty reaching their destination due to bridges closing down. In this line of work, one minute can be the difference between life and death. With the poor infrastructure and the issues associated with it have made reasons for Mississippians to leave the state. In 2010 through 2016, 801,000 or 4% of the millennials have decided to leave Mississippi. And this is the largest population decrease in one state throughout the nation. This age group varies between 23 and 38 years of age. Now, to, due to the population decrease is due to the lack of opportunity or the unsatisfaction of how the state works, or both. Even genera generations before millennials are deciding to leave. For example, small business owners are deciding to leave due to bridges closing down around their shop, which will decrease customer interest. So the company will move where business is good. With the population decrease, the occurrence of brain drain occurs as well. Now this is where people with moderate or high GPAs decide to leave the state for better jobs or better living conditions. The state, county, and local governments also don't also lack the funds to repair the infrastructure. Most small towns affected by poverty have been operating online using their sign budget, using their sign budget since bridges are being closed down left and right in the area. According to Mississippi Economic Council, Mississippi needs to increase annual infrastructure by 375 million just to maintain and fix bridges throughout the 82 counties. Now there has been solutions for infrastructure that are proposed. At one of the solutions at the local level would be raising the property taxes. This has been shut down due to it being the most unpopular choice. This has been shut down due to it being the most unpopular choice, it would not provide sufficient funds or no fairness would be involved. Plus, since Mississippi is one of the poor states, many people who don't own property won't be able to pay the tax at all. An example of unfairness would be an old lady not owning a car at all will have to pay the same taxes as a person who uh, drives a pickup truck 10 hours every day. Another proposed solution involves updating the fuel taxes. This is the last fuel taxation was in 1987. The tax, however, was fixed and it couldn't correlate with the inflation, so it won't be able to keep up with the increasing prices of repair. 
According to the Mississippi Department of Transportation, inflation increased about 115%, and, and the cost of construction is 10 times more than the rate of gas tax revenue. Another proposed solution is the Building Roads Improving Development and Growing the Economy Act, or the Bridge Act. This is a $1 billion infrastructure plan proposed by Tate Reeves. The bill, however, ended, the, the bill, however, uh, ended during the legislative session. This is due to, the, uh, due to it requiring local governments to match state dollars. And since most of the local governments are affected by poverty, the bill died. Another temporary solution that was created was the railroad culverts. This procedure took an old railroad car and it cut and folded it into a pipe, laid it on its side, laid it into the area that needed to be crossed, and put gravel on top of it. The pipe can also hold to about 50 tons, and the price for a railroad cobalt depended on the length required, but it ranged within the thousands. Although this is a quick solution, which allowed workers to go to the next project, it leaves the asphalt unrepaired and motors to rely on gravel road to go around the failed infrastructure, which was replaced by the culvert. In conclusion, with all the problems created by the port infrastructure and with the proposed solutions to counteract the problems, we still don't have a long-term solution. Even with all the solutions, the time to make all the repairs will be extremely long. After workers finish one bridge, two bridges will be considered ineligible and be closed down until repairs will be made. Today, I just wanted to publicize the issues on port infrastructure and hopefully gain your attention throughout this presentation. I hope as you leave here that you will understand this growing issue and how it is affecting us Mississippians. My name is Patrick Dunkel, and thank you for your time.